Hello guys, this is Brian Mounts. I run TurfMechanic.com and this channel. Today I'm coming to you from a blustery November day where I live. Winter comes a little bit earlier than lots of parts of the country. About 10 days ago, I put down a winter fertilizer on my lawn. Currently, as it stands, my, my ground temperature is still in the low 40s. Maybe in the wee hours of the morning, it's in the upper 30s. So nothing is frozen, but it is darn cold and nothing is really growing. About 10 days ago, I put down the winter fertilizer. Uh, the grass is still not growing, but the leaves are coming down. And this is the perfect time to start talking about the last cut of the season. Even though lots of people feel like they've done the last cut of the season, I actually don't think so because I like to pick up all of my leaves with the lawnmower in the bagger. As I presented in a video a few days back, which I'll link to kind of up in here and maybe down in the description below, you don't have to pick the leaves up off the ground so long as you mulch them with the lawnmower. Now, I put down fertilizers throughout the year. I put down weed pre-emergence in the spring. I tend to the grass regularly, and I don't necessarily need to mulch these clippings in for the nutritional benefit of my lawn, nor do I need to mulch them in for the weed suppression uh, benefits that come with that. For me, I just want to get them off the lawn because I end up getting lots of pine needles mixed in because of the pine trees that you see behind me. What I end up doing is I will do some raking along the fence line to make sure that things get pulled away from the fence. And then I grab my mower and I mow over it with the bagger. In any event, I use the snapper a lot because it's a slimmer design. It is, uh, it's not heavy and it's push, which means I can kind of go back and forth quite a bit with it, getting into nooks and crannies underneath play structures and along fence lines. Uh, and it sucks the leaves up off the ground pretty good. Yesterday, we had an enormous windstorm, and I'm talking like sustained winds of like 40 miles an hour for like 10 hours straight. I gotta call it my Oregon tropical storm. I mean, it was nuts. Uh, it was mostly dry until the afternoon yesterday, and then we got a lot of rain. So everything is moist and wet, but I still expect this to pick it up. But all of this is to say is how short do you cut the lawn? I'm like beating around the bush here. Okay, during the winter, grass goes dormant. I don't care really where you live outside of like South Florida, South Texas, maybe like the heat of Arizona. I mean, there are a few places in the United States where you can keep grass going all year long, but whether you're in a cold season, like I am, this is mostly rye and Kentucky bluegrass, it all wants to go dormant. It will perform uh, and stay alive um, through the winter. It'll perform in the spring, and that's why it will. It's a cooled season grass. If you live further south in the transition zone or even the southern states, you will not have cold season grass, you'll have warm season grass. But the thing is your winters are your winters and your warm season grasses will still likely go dormant except for in the most southern and most warm places in the country. All of these types of grasses will go dormant. They want to go dormant, partly because of the cold, but mostly because of the sun. This time of year, we get very little sun. Where I live, we're getting just a little bit over nine hours of sun every day right now. Even Miami in the middle of November, they're only getting 11 hours of sun and it just gets worse all the way into December. The sun, as the, as the levels of sunlight drop, the grass is just simply not able to photo, photosynthesize, even if the temperatures were a little bit warmer. They want to check out, they wanna to go to sleep. They're like bears, they just want to go into hibernation, at least for a little bit. Because of that, as we go through fall into late fall, right now it's like the second half of November where I'm at, this grass is pulling all of its energy out of the leaf foliage down into the roots. And I know that for a fact simply because it's cold and it's dark. And even though it's been fed with nutrients, it's simply not growing. Since it's all pulled all of its energy and nutrients down into the root system, I can safely cut this back a little bit shorter than I normally would have throughout the rest of the year because it doesn't need the foliage to keep that energy stored underground. There is such a thing as too short. Now, if you're just gonna keep cutting this all the way down to the ground and just scalp it way down, it's not gonna perform well. This grass is trained to be two, three inches tall 
depending on the grass type that you have, it might be trained to be four inches tall. You can't cut it too low. You can't cut it down to the crown of the grass. Otherwise, it's just not gonna have the legs to support new growth coming in the spring. So we cut it back a bit, mostly to prevent snow compaction and uh, damage throughout the year because it's not growing. So any damage that happens can't grow out. In, let's say for instance, June, if you accidentally scalp the lawn or maybe dig a hole uh, on accident, any kind of damage that happens, you can grow it out usually. Even in the early fall, I have a video on here about me uh, fixing a rust fungus problem in my lawn. All you do really to fix that problem is grow it out. So during the winter, we can't do that. So we cut it back short so that we can avoid problems like snow mold, compaction. We can limit the damage that animals have on the ground, snow shovels have on the ground, simply by having less foliage on top. Come spring, it will be a lot easier to clean up the yard if the grass is shorter. Now, here's the caveat. There's always a caveat. There's always a reason to keep it longer. If you wanna keep it longer, then there are reasons to do that. If you keep it longer, you are more capable of keeping that grass growing green. I shouldn't say growing, but keeping the grass green longer, simply because there's more leaf surface for the sun to capture and photosynthesize. Now, this doesn't really affect me because I live in too cold of a season, uh, in too cold of a climate. If, for instance, I lived in a transition zone area and I had a cold season grass, let's say for instance, I lived in California or Northern Georgia or somewhere where it stays pretty warm all year long. But if I'm still growing Kentucky bluegrass or a turf type tall fescue, then those grasses might be able to stay green throughout the winter. It's possible. Uh, you gotta have a little bit of luck on your side, but it is possible. Those areas are gonna be getting more light because they're further south and they're going to be a little bit warmer because they're further south. So if you suspect or hope to be getting a nice warm winter and you're in a southern state and you happen to be growing a cold season grass, then hey, you might wanna keep that grass longer simply because it's going to stay greener longer and it might even make it over winter. By spring, you'll have probably a healthier lawn than everybody else who's trying to wake their grass up from dormancy. Now, I'll be going into videos on that probably in the late winter timeframe, so make sure to subscribe for those when they come. But today, I'm gonna to be cutting this grass. Now, I've already brought this grass down to as low as I'm gonna go. Here on my snapper, I've got it on set on number two, which is about 1.8 inches tall. Um, I could go lower, but I just don't want to. Um, I think that this is good enough. If I go lower, it starts being a problem with scalping on the ground, and I just don't want to stress the lawn going into winter by doing that. I would recommend that whatever your normal mowing height is, bring it down a single notch if you plan on your lawn shutting down for the season. Down in the description below, I have a link over to my website. Uh, there is an article on the site all about grass length through the winter. The whole thing is about that. So whether you live in a cold season or a warm season area, or if you've got a Bermuda grass or a fescue grass or a KBG grass, whatever it is, I've got information specific for that grass type and region. For me, I'm gonna continue cutting it here, although I'm not really cutting it anymore. I'm just really just kind of going over it at the same height picking up the leaves. So I'm gonna get this done and I probably will have to do it a couple more times, uh, but most of the leaves are gone. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to get my lawnmowers put away fully by December. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you like this video. Hit the button if you do, please subscribe and I will see you in the next video.